So, all right, well, welcome everyone. This is our um, weekly team huddle, and my name is Missy Hydes. I'm an independent consultant and um, regional vice Pre president with Arbonne. And so if this is the first time you've been on our team huddle, um, welcome. We are so excited to have you. Um, if you have been participating for some time, you are in for a real treat tonight. And if you're catching the recording, um, you know, I think that that's wonderful that you're taking the time to hop on as well. Um, I know that the nuggets that we're going to get tonight are going to be invaluable to you and to your business. And so um, just to timestamp, this is Sunday, December 16th, 2018. Um, and we are coming into our um, biggest close of the biggest month of the biggest year um, in Arbonne. And it's very, very exciting. And so tonight I have the privilege of um, really introducing some of you for the very first time to an incredible lady. This lady has um, journeyed in Arbonne kind of in a same time frame that I have um, and we've had different journeys. We're in different seasons of life but she has always just been um, someone that I have admired sometimes from afar, sometimes close up. Um, I love her nuggets. I love her energy. There are um, times when I think about just being in that season of life that that she's in and it's um because of how she lives her life it's it's encouraging to know that um we can live some of our best days in our later years and i love that i love that um she's a learner i love that she's a leader and i love all the things that she's going to impart and share with us tonight so um i feel like eunice we have kind of built up to you maybe more than other speakers because we were so jazzed for last week and then you were out with the flu and but i will tell you um and you know this <coughs> kelly francis that she hopped on and she um, shared and in the few minutes that she shared with us um, it was super impactful and I got several texts and comments um, from people on the team that just loved everything that she shared and so I was so appreciative of her being willing to hop on so tonight I'm gonna hand it over to you Miss Eunice and Eunice I know you have tons and tons of like accolades and all of these bios and I forgot honestly to ask you like hey send me your bio um, Eunice if you guys did it know that picture that I posted, the takeover by Eunice Ray. Um, she spoke at our global training conference um, for a house full of 17,000 plus people and she totally kicked, I'm gonna use the word ass, she kicked ass at that call and it was awesome. And it was inspiring and I think you can find it on the source. So um, Eunice, thank you for taking the time to hop on and to share. Eunice has no direct connection to our team, so she financially benefits in no way from taking, for taking, you know, tonight's time and really just pouring and investing into us. So I don't take that lightly. And so I just want to thank you, Eunice, for hopping on and giving us your time. I, I do so appreciate that. So I'm going to hand it over to you and let you take it away. Well, it's my very great pleasure. Um, Missy, I appreciate it. I'm very sorry about last week. I am still working through this flu. So I will be very cautious because if I talk too much, I cough and that's really amazing. So anyway, um, <coughs> let me just tell you that um, what I loved about Arbonne was um, not anything I understood in the very beginning. Um, I have grown to really appreciate this business and this business model, which I knew nothing about when I began uh, 15 years ago. Um, I went to a presentation and um, I was 55 years old and I um, had a daughter that was right out of college and needed to make more money. And um, she had a um, degree <coughs> that is today obsolete. She's a print journalism major. And so print journalists are kind of, you know, adapting, morphing into something else, but they're not printing much anymore. So the point is, is that I knew that um, she was um, in a field that she would love, but, you know, it would be nice if she got married and wrote, you know, but to make a living doing this was, eh. So <coughs> I began at 55, we went to a presentation and I listened to a person that I did not know talk about um, Arbonne. It wasn't the best presentation I ever heard. And it was a young new district manager. And um, it was truly, she really was dumb like a fox, Kathy Epperson. 
because I thought, you know, if this girl's doing this, I mean, anybody could do this. And um, because it was a pretty not so hot presentation. But I'll tell you what really struck me was I heard her heart. Well, her information was okay, um, but I heard her being willing to uh, get out there and make it happen. I've always been a booster for women. You know, um, we are the glass ceiling, the original glass ceiling sort of generation, you know, pl plowing ahead and um, getting opportunities to do a lot of things that <coughs> women up to then had not really been able to do. Sorry, guys. <coughs> <coughs> so anyway, I thought, well, she's done a pretty good job. I mean, you know, so I said, Francis, here, here's my credit card. Buy that 50% off thing. And um, that'll be really great. I'll buy the product. I'll, if I like the skincare, that'll be great. And I said, by the way, you should do this business. And because uh, it only costs, you know, it's less than $100 to start a business, which is remarkable. And the upside, if the upside in it was anything like this girl said, I thought, well, wow. So um, it was worth it was worth the money to see if it worked, and I realized pretty quickly that it was going to be probably important for me to take my twenty three twenty four year old daughter by the hand and work with her to um, teach this kid that I had homeschooled, you know, how to get an MBA basically. So that's what we did, and. Um, Kelly went to area in the first month she was in a first step area. The first month she was in the business, which was remarkable at that point. Very few people, if anyone had done it in our group. And um, I went to a uh, region in 10 months and to nation in 18 months. And I just decided yeah, people always say, well, what did you do? Tell me about what you did. Well, I just decided to see what it was. I wanted to see if it worked. It was, a, it was a challenge to me personally. Um, I wasn't competing with anyone else. I didn't care about anybody else, what they were doing exactly. I built a team. I was building a team. I knew the team was important. Uh, when I signed up with Arbonne, for Arbonne, I took two people with me. I said, hey, you ought to take a look at this. And we ought to do this maybe together. I mean, I instinctively understood that you were going to go faster and more powerfully with a team. And I just asked them, I didn't know, you know, they said, what is it? I said, I don't know. Just come and take a look. You know, this girl knows about it. Let's see what she has to say. But you have sort of an instinct about something, you know, uh, you kind of have a sort of a knowing. And I knew that um, I got an idea of who was in this business, like Dr. Deanna Osborne and uh, Lisa Voorhees, a pastor's wife. Surely she's not out hawking a, a scam, you know? And um, so I'm looking at this thinking, yeah, I think that um, there's some kind of interesting people. You know, you would have thought maybe for less than $100 to get into the business, you might be really sort of bottom feeding a little bit. But it was surprising to me the people, the caliber of people that were in this business which also spoke to me. So I made it my business to get to know them pretty quickly and uh, wanted to know why they were doing it, what their story was. And um, I was very uh, uh, surprised to find, not surprised, but very um, happy to find that they all wanted to help me and help anyone who wanted to do this business. And if you were willing to put in the time and make the focused, determined effort, they would be with you. How hard is that, you know? So, um, and yeah, did I do everything right in the beginning? No, I've never been really good at placing orders. I hate that. I've never been really good at the, I'm not an administrative person. You know, I'm sort of the big picture person. And so once you're past 55, I'll tell you the really nice thing about the wrinkle years is that you don't keep beating yourself up over the fact that you're not good at a lot of stuff. You know, you don't think about, oh, I could do more. You just say, you know, I'm no good at it. So you hire it. You find somebody who really loves to do that and you pay them to do it and that works, okay? Then you don't beat yourself up and it gets done and everything is great. I mean, so that's kind of how I've lived the latter part of my life. I quit beating myself up over the fact that I couldn't do most, you know, administrative things. There are certain things that I do very well. So I focus my attention on those. And I, in our team, right from the beginning, I found people, 
you know, I said, hey, you figure out how we get paid. <clears throat> you figure out how you place orders because they love all that. I hate all that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but I said, I'll, I'll do the presentations. You bring people, I'll do the presentations. I'll teach you how to do a presentation and how to get to the end and call for the, you know, the question. Are we going to buy something, join something? We're going to do something here. Or do you want samples? No pressure. Just what do you want to do? I was never afraid to close. You know, what are we going to do now? Here's what I've got. These are, this is information you should know. And um, if nothing else, I satisfied myself with one thing that we were, um, I was telling people something that was important. Um, I could not believe, I, I believed it then, but I really believe it now. Um, I am stunned at 70 years old. I have six grandchildren, two are celiac, which means that they can't eat certain foods without terrible reactions. And they're less than 10 years old. Um, where did that come from? We never, I mean, I had all the mothers that were having babies when we were in that, that stage of life. Nobody had celiac. Nobody talked about EpiPens. Nobody talked about, you know, eczema. You know, these things are all new. And I have a very important duty in my Arbonne with my Arbonne soapbox to be able to say, hey, let me tell you something. All this is new. You know, you all, it's the water you swim in. It's what you talk about, what you think about. But believe me, what you put on your body and in your body matters enormously. And let me just tell you why, for example, Arbonne is non-GMO, why Arbonne is gluten-free, why Arbonne has no artificial dyes and fragrances. Let me just tell you why that matters. And um, let me tell you about the 2,000 less harmful and toxic ingredients. And why does that matter? When we went to the store, we picked whatever was the stylish thing to get, you know, whether it was shampoo or skincare or whatever. We thought about concealment and cover up. We didn't ever think about putting vitamins on our skin and how wonderful that would be. In other words, there have been so many advancements and so many important things that if I don't do anything in a presentation than to sit down and tell people what the difference in the product is, why I'm so excited about Arbonne, um, that's enough for me. And usually as I walk away, people will either want to sample or purchase or whatever. And I have made that presentation for 15 years. And it began with, we have no mineral oil. Well, we've gotten to so far beyond that, um, that I am actually very, very proud to talk about Arbonne um, as a product grouping and um, that people should know and understand this. Yes, I think that uh, people care about this more and more. I think our market segment is growing. I think that there are people like Beauty Counter and others that are encroaching, but they do not have the 2,000 less toxic and harmful ingredients. And you need to understand about Beauty Counter, for example, which kind of makes me mad because I feel their encroachment, but you know what? Um, and they work with the Environmental Working Group. Well, they're the president of Beauty Counter sits on the board of the Environmental Working Group, okay? Just so y'all know, there's a little conflict of interest there. Um, <coughs> so don't ever let anybody beat you up over the fact that maybe, you know, this is such a great product. I don't ever get into a dog fight over product, ever. I just say, you know, you don't want to go there. Let me give you a sample and try this. You know, just be bossy. It kind of works. And the older you get, that's the other benefit of wrinkles. People just go ahead and say, okay, you know, you don't want to cross her because she will tell you exactly flat out what she thinks. And you may not want to hear it. Um, but at any rate, <coughs> it works for me. You know, you all can cajole people and still smile real pretty and everybody wants to do what you want them to do. <coughs> that's over for me. So just tell them flat up, this is what it is. This is why it's important. And I want to tell you something. 
if you will focus no matter where you are, no matter who you're talking to, you can talk to somebody like me. I just want you to know that, um, that 40% of the boom, a boom is somebody, a boomer is born between 1945, right after World War II, to 1964. So the upper edge of the boom is now 73, and the lower part of the boom is 54. So you see, we're going to have a lot of boomers around for another 20 years, okay? Um, and by the way, we have a 78% uh, chance of success as an entrepreneur. If you prospect me, you've got more of a chance for me to succeed as an entrepreneur than when you talk to some of these young ones, okay? They've got about a 20, 20, 30% chance to succeed as young people, okay? And it's only because we have more life experience, okay? And uh, we've made all the mistakes and all the rest. So we may have a shorter shelf life. You may prospect us and before you know it, we'll be, you know, croaked. But the point is we will be very successful in the time that we are working. You need to understand that 40% of this boom has not enough money to retire. So you have no, um, nothing but good news for a boomer, okay? For someone who's a little older, it's worth your time to prospect them because they have the capacity and the ability to succeed as entrepreneurs in a very overwhelming way, okay? And if financial need has something to do with it, they have a financial need. And to work 10 to 15 hours a week, calling and seeing people, traveling, taking advantage of the tax advantages. Some of you know about that, some of you don't. If you don't, you should. In other words, if I take a trip to Florida and I call that a vacation, I can't write that off my taxes. And if you don't understand what that means, you need to talk to somebody who does, okay? But for me, as an older person, tax, my tax position is important to me, okay? It should be, an important, should be important to you, but you may not get it. Um, but if I said I'm going to Florida to prospect people and be in a, you know, I'm going to be, um, you know, sitting in a coffee shop, buying coffee, talking to people, and I'm going to stay down there and see if I can start a team at Naples, Florida, where it is probably summer right now. And um, then I can write that off. In other words, that becomes something that m improves my tax position. I'm still going to pay the same amount of tax. It just depends upon how I allocate it. Do I get to control and use that money or do I give it to Uncle Sam to use and control? Well, I think I'd like to keep it myself, you know? And I would like to promote my business with my, uh, in my, you know, with a tax uh, position that is more favorable to me. Um, and people that are older, when you prospect us, if you understand that, you can mention that. Um, you know, a lot of times docs and lawyers and other people get in this business so that they can take advantage of the tax uh, 1099 business gives them an ability to write things off that a salaried position does not. Okay, and understanding that would be really, really important. Now, the other thing you need to understand is that in the next 20 years, 70 to 80% of the jobs we currently have will disappear. Now, that is not me. That is, you don't have to read business writers very long to get the idea that the digital economy will need less and less human beings. Artificial intelligence, robotics, um, uh, you know, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, mechanics, all that, all those machines will have a huge impact in jobs. Half of millennials, according to the Washington Post, half of millennials, millennials are 40 this year, will um, compete with robots. That means that the job market is changing dramatically. By 2030, that's in 11 years, 50% of colleges are, are slated to collapse. In the next five years, half of the malls in the United States are slated to also close. And by 2050, 
the minority populations will become the majority. The America is graying and browning. Okay, so when you sit back and plan a strategy for five years, 10 years, um, you need to take into consideration how you are going to strategically plan your work. And um, if all these people are losing their jobs, will there be anyone to buy our bond? Well, my solution to that is simple, global. The, the, the idea, there are people today who will pay, they're not buying price. You know, price is 30% of the buying market. 70% of the buying market is interested in something beside price. They want value, they want quality, they want brand, and that sort of thing. So when you get discouraged because you hear, oh, well, that's real expensive, you're talking to the wrong person. Go to Walmart, tell them, go to Walmart, it's okay, but you are not my market. You are not my customer, okay? I'm looking to talk to someone who cares deeply about getting a good value, but also who knows that it matters what you put on your skin and what you put in your body, okay, enormously. So that's the group I would like to talk to. And I would like to talk to that group globally. I would like to talk to them because they are um, all over the world. And they share this idea that it matters. Those kinds of things matter enormously, okay? And if you are learning how to uh, be diversified, you're, you've got people from every walk of life. Um, we've had, for the last few meetings on our Sunday night call, Claire Rosoli, for example, who, is, um, who makes, has a big Spanish team, and um, Dr. Ramona um, um, Lawrence, who is a, uh, on the diversity thing for Arbonne. And she's talking about why, why do people, women of color, what are they interested in with Arbonne? Why are, what are Latin women interested in men, interested in Arbonne? What is it that matters to them? And, and if you have a team that is global and uh, of a very great diversity, then you have built a business that will withstand the changes that are coming, in my view. I think it's your best hedge against what is coming. You, more, everyone will need more than one income stream. And with Arbonne, you can start another income stream um, by becoming focused, um, directed, knowing who you want to talk to, okay? Um, people who understand that, um, uh, you know, pollution isn't something outside of us, it's in us. And uh, we're doing everything we can to keep our children as I started earlier in this conversation, you know, the fact that our grandchildren, my grandchildren, your children are not doing well and are in, in a group, a, a generation where they are, you know, sick and, um, you know, the cancer, the cancer's up. Everybody knows that. And that for me is absolutely terrifying. We knew no one. Um, I can tell you there was no one in my children's lives who had a, a chronic disease, a very serious chronic disease, not diabetes, not, um, not cancer, not any of those kinds of issues. And that today is not uncommon. And that is the reason you mount up and you use our bond as a soapbox and you get out there and you do your bit for making it a better place than when you got this place. And it's a perfect platform. And all you have to do is get focused and become enough of a missionary that you get people who will draw to you, who can afford to be in this fight, afford to be in it because they've got a business that, that kind of double tracks. They talk about products that are pure, safe, and beneficial. They let people know about that. And they become uh, someone that can be, um, um, uh, a missionary, a message bringer, somebody who can help others. And if you help enough other people, they will help you. It's a very simple thing. I always thought that women would be more likely to be missionaries than they would be business women. 
okay? I thought if we were more uh, directed to help others, to help others get better, be better, um, and their children to improve, their own home, health positions to improve, uh, that they would be um, with us forever. Uh, we could change lives. And that for me was the reason to get into Arbonne. You know, at some point, um, you know, when I got into Arbonne, I did not need, I did not get in it for the money. Um, sure, I love a little extra money, who doesn't? But it wasn't money that motivated me. It was the idea that I could um, help other people um, get better, be better, and that I could spread the word um, to um, make others healthier and their children better. And for me, that was enough. That was my why. And it has only gotten deeper and more firmly rooted in me as time has gone on. So I would like to tell you that um, um, you have a product, uh, 350, more than 350 products that are very well designed, that allow you to live a life that you can design by simply presenting them. And that this digital business, the network marketing model has only come into its own since the social media and the digital economy has come online, literally. This business would not be nearly as exciting, but for our ability to talk just like this on a Sunday night to neighborhoods across this city and maybe across the country, maybe across the world. How fabulous is that? So use the media, learn to use it, use it to further the mission that really Arbonne has of pure, safe, beneficial, and change people's lives and change your own life. Um, it's a pretty exciting thing to do. And um, yeah, it's December. Um, it is the uh, 16th, I think. Yeah, you have two weeks. It's, it's like having the whole month. So when you go out this week and next week and you see people, don't let people tell you it's, you know, they're busy, blah, 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 blah. you're busy, you're not busy. Um, this is just another opportunity to meet people, talk to people in all sorts of circumstances. You know, they're, they're waiting for you to tell them something. And you know what they want to know more than anything else? What's going to make 2019 any different than 2018, 2017, 2016. They are desperate. They are desperate for something that would change their lives. Um, if I were, um, I'm so glad I started this when I was 55. If I had done it when I was 35, I would have had all that extra time and Arbonne was around, but nobody ever mentioned a word to me about Arbonne, not a word. So please don't be the person that won't mention it. Please be bold. Please go out and build a team, make the world a better place, make it a safer place for our kids. It's, 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 it, there's a job that will pay you to do that. It's called Arbonne. I love you guys. That was awesome. Thank you, Eunice. So good. And uh, I love that this call was recorded because if you're like me, I was trying to take notes very quickly on some of the years and the percentages, but um, you're just a wealth of knowledge. And I just appreciate that you're always so generous to share that with us. And it's so awesome. And yeah, that thought that people are absolutely looking for what will make 2019 different than the last five. That's very deep and that's very true. And that's what they're going to bed thinking about. And they're looking for the next fix instead of actually knowing that there's a solution or an answer. And so I love that. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Eunice. I appreciate you very, very much. Love you lady. Thank you all for hopping on. Love you guys so much. Bye.